everyone and welcome to another edition of the Human Physiology video tutorials with me, Dr. Amir Sandhu. Today we're going to talk about the oxygen haemoglobin disassociation curve and discuss how oxygen breathed in from the lungs is transported to our tissues where it's actually needed. So let's get straight into it. So there are two main ways in which oxygen is transported to the tissues. One is in the plasma and this approximates to about 2% of the oxygen transported in this way, but by far the greatest amount of oxygen is transported in our red blood cells, which I'm going to abbreviate as RBCs, okay? Red blood cells and 98% of, of our oxygen is transported in red blood cells contained within, within our blood. Now, one red blood cell, so if we've got a red blood cell here, will contain 270 million haemoglobin molecules, which I'm going to just abbreviate as HG. So each red blood cell in our body contains 270 million haemoglobin molecules and up to four oxygen molecules can attach to one haemoglobin molecule. So we can see that this is a very efficient way to transport oxygen throughout our body. Now, the oxygen haemoglobin dissociation curve always seems complex when you first come across it. If you've never come across it before, it can look a little bit daunting, but it's actually very simple uh, in, in what it's trying to show, what it's trying to uh, describe in terms of the unloading of oxygen from the haemoglobin. So let's get straight into it. So here we have the oxygen haemoglobin dissociation curve. We've got the partial pressure of oxygen at the bottom in millimeters of mercury, okay? And here we have the, what's known as the haemoglobin saturation. Okay, so this is the percentage of haemoglobin which is saturated with oxygen. Okay, so this is the haemoglobin saturation and the partial, uh, the, sorry, the pressure of oxygen uh, across uh, the bottom. So essentially what's happening is when we've got blood returning from the lungs into our left atrium, it then goes into the left ventricle, the left ventricle contracts and the blood goes out into to the aorta into the systemic circulation. And we can see that in the aorta, the blood contains, is almost 100% uh, saturated with oxygen. Okay, so we've got 100% saturation of oxygen uh, with the haemoglobin, okay? So all of the haemoglobin molecules contain uh, four oxygen uh, molecules and the pressure of oxygen is uh, approximating to 100 millimeters of mercury. Now, the blood is obviously gonna make its way from the aorta to the tissues where it's needed. And as that process actually happens, the haemoglobin is giving up the oxygen to the tissues. So essentially this portion here, that we can see here, this portion is the haemoglobin unloading oxygen to the tissues. Okay, so as we're using up oxygen to fuel uh, muscle contractions, uh, we're producing, obviously we're having uh, energy production which is requiring oxygen uh, to produce ATP. Uh, so the haemoglobin is going to those tissues and it's actually unloading those oxygen to the tissues, it's dissociating away. So by the time we get to uh, the blood, by the time the blood gets to the venous circulation, so it's been through the tissues, it's gathered through um, the, into the venules, it's into the veins and it's returning back to the heart, we have a pressure of oxygen of about 40 millimetres of mercury, but we still have approximately 75 percent of the haemoglobin saturated with oxygen. Now this is remarkable because it means that the haemoglobin always has uh, an increased capacity to unload oxygen should the demand for oxygen increase in the tissue. So let's have an example. If we were exercising, what might happen is we would require more oxygen, so we can actually have the haemoglobin giving up the oxygen that it contains a lot earlier. Now, it's interesting that we actually have another uh, very important 
mechanism within our muscles which is also related to the disassociation of oxygen and that relates to myoglobin okay so in our muscle we've got a protein which is like hemoglobin called myoglobin and I'll just do it in dots here Now what's fascinating about myoglobin, so I'll just label this up, this is myoglobin, is that it holds on to its oxygen for much longer, so it has a greater affinity for oxygen. So it holds on to the oxygen much longer, myoglobin is present in the muscle, uh, and essentially when we're exercising very hard and most of the haemoglobin has given up its oxygen to the tissues, so it's dissociated away from the haemoglobin, we then get the myoglobin coming into play. The myoglobin will then, in conditions where the pressure of oxygen in the muscle has reduced to very low levels, so for example, for, this, for the sake of argument here, we can see a pressure of 20 millimetres of mercury causes uh, the myoglobin to come into play and give up its oxygen to the tissues to, to continue to, to fuel that muscle contraction, to continue to provide the oxygen to uh, produce ATP. So there you have it really, that's the heat oxygen haemoglobin disassociation curve. We always start off with the haemoglobin fully saturated, but it dissociates the, that oxygen to the tissues as the tissues uh, increase their requirement for oxygen. Um, and obviously once we deplete the uh, oxygen in the haemoglobin, it all dissociates away. We have the myoglobin in the muscle providing further oxygen. Now, one important uh, um, thing to consider with the oxygen haemoglobin disassociation curve is something called the Bohr effect, which we talked about in the uh, video about carbon dioxide. And really, these two videos are related, carbon dioxide transport um, and uh, the oxygen haemoglobin disassociation curve. Okay, so the Bohr effect is the shifting of this heat oxygen haemoglobin dissociation curve to the right. Now, why does that happen? So, I mean, we can draw this, we can draw this out. So, when you're exercising, as you increase the amount of CO2, okay, the oxygen haemoglobin dissociation curve shifts to the right. So, we've seen it move to the right. What does that mean? It means for a, for a given pressure of oxygen, the haemoglobin is unloading that oxygen much earlier. Now, why does that shift to the right? Well, we know from the production of carbon dioxide that it converts into carbonic acid, which dissociates into hydrogen and bicarbonate. Now, what happens to the hydrogen is that it attaches to the haemoglobin, causing the haemoglobin to unload the oxygen. So essentially, when we produce more CO2, we're also producing more hydrogen. So the increase in hydrogen causes hydrogen to attach to the haemoglobin, which causes oxygen to be unloaded to the tissues earlier. And that's how the Bohr effect occurs, and that's how it translates to a shift in the oxygen haemoglobin disassociation curve to the right. Now, other factors such as muscle temperature can also influence the shifting of the curve to the right. So generally when we exercise, we, get, we tend to get a two to three degree increase in our muscle temperature, uh, and that will also promote uh, oxygen unloading to the tissues from the haemoglobin much earlier. So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment uh, and get in touch. Uh, but I hope to see you again on a future video. Thank you very much for your time.